all right guys welcome welcome all right welcome to another podcast episode so i'm gonna freestyle it uh today all right i'm gonna freestyle today so um i don't know if i'm gonna do any readings but i did bust my cards out just in case i want to do you know bust wali reading or something like that but i wanted to talk about some things um first Okay, of course, this is a podcast. All right, so uh, this is the official reality check cashing podcast. I do readings, I do think pieces, I do all that. Okay, all that and more. Okay, so welcome. You could be watching this from Spreaker, which is where I'm recording on, or from any of the other uh, platforms such as uh, Amazon, Audible, Amazon slash Audible. Um, what else? Uh, Deezer, Geo7, iHeartRadio, Spotify, okay, alright, so, and this will also be uploaded to uh, YouTube um, as well, um, so anyways, so um, I'm chilling at home, um, it is Friday, okay, Sept- uh, why I say September, something about September 19th, what's going on, something about September, anyways, um, Today is July 19th, okay, 2024, all right, and it is officially 3.48 p.m. uh, Pacific Standard Time. So, um, I just got out out of the, uh, I took a late shower, okay, took a mid-nap, woke up, took a late shower, okay, and um, I took a spiritual bath, the rest of my uh, La Negra Curandera bath that I had. Um, I stretched it out just by adding, cause it's a small little pack and I stretched it out by adding more water to it or whatever. So I finally took the rest of that bath. So I'm feeling good. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Setting the mood, smoking my little blunt or whatever. Yeah. And also, um, burning some wormwood. Um, I decided to make a podcast cause I wanted to talk about like, cause I was watching a video you know, those like, um, it's on YouTube, but it's like TikTok compilations and shit like that. So I like to watch videos of that, like in different types of subjects, it could be spiritual subjects or just in the realm of like so- sociology, like the realm of like dating and, you know, mental health and this, this and that. Right. So, um, anyways, I came across a video and, you know, they were talking about, uh, what was the name of the video? Let me see. I just went to it. It was saying, pay attention. If you're quiet, pay attention to what men say they are attracted to, something of that nature. Um, so I want to talk about that, about, about looks and how that uh, looks and quality and confidence and all that stuff by telling you a little bit more about myself. Um, so uh, first off, yeah, I definitely do, did agree with some of the sentiments in the video And, um, it is true, uh, that whatever that males boast about the most, or I wouldn't say that whoever that they talk about the most, even if they talk in bad, they usually do the opposite of what they say. So it's better as a woman to not contort yourself and try to like be everything that they want to be and, you know, try to compete for their gaze with other women and do all this and that. At the end of the day, they'll tell you one thing and they will do another thing. So, but anyways, aside from that, I want to focus on something that's more centered towards, uh, towards the self, right? Um, as an individual, whether you are a woman or a man or however that you identify and whatever, right? So for me, uh, what I've learned over the years and my big age is that it's not really about looks, even though that there is a level of superficiality, especially based off uh, where you live at, who you grew up around and stuff like that. I currently live in LA, so it's definitely a lot of like that superficial type of energy and this, this and that. But at the end of the day, what I've realized at my big age is that it don't really matter about like looks and like phenotype and this and that. Um, it's really, what really matters is your personality. And I know that sounds cliche, but in my personal life, I was able to attract all types of guys and even girls too, but mainly guys, I was able to attract all kinds of guys that looked at all kinds of ways. And I never, and I treated them all the same. I never treated anyone based off of how they look. I treated people based off of how they treated me, um, 
whether they are, you know, um, respectful, mentally sound, yada to the yada. So for myself, I, I focus on energy only, right? Of course you want to be attracted to someone. Obviously you want someone to at least be relatively attractive or remotely attractive or whatever. You do want to, you have to have some type of physical attraction. I know there's some people where that's, it's really important to them. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, so I guess we're talking about preference and non-preference and phenotypes and this and that. What I've discovered and, and th what has been my experience is that I'm able to pretty much pull in people, pull in guys with my personality. If I wanted to go out there and find someone and date someone, it would be very easy for me to do, right? I just personally don't want anybody in my face. So I'm, I, I don't really date. It's not really my thing. I think it's a lot going on out there in the world. Everybody's trying to be a savage. Uh, there's all these games that everybody plays. There's all these rules, all these games. Don't do this, do that. It's too much for me. It's, it's not, you know, and then people, and then when you want to be by yourself, people shame you for being by yourself. When you're on your self-care tip, people shame you about that. So there's always people having opinions about what you should or what you shouldn't do based off of the things that they tolerate. Okay, well, maybe you tolerate certain shit and I don't. That's fine, right? But because other people make crappy choices and they see other people trying not to make those choices, they want to discourage them, you know? But I have drew people in with my uh, personality. That's really all you need. It's about your personality, your energy, your confidence. Confidence is a big factor. You could be good looking, have a perfect body, like the IG model chick, you can have all that going on. But if you don't have no fucking substance, if you don't have a fucking personality, you, um, you have a nasty ass fucking attitude on, on top of that. It's, it's you're not going to really get that far. Now you'll be able to get attention, but you won't be able to keep that person engaged depending on the, on the guys that you want to attract and, and, and pull in. You can pull in the guy, but you won't be able to keep his interest if you don't have any substance to your character. If your phenotype is your only personality, that's whack as fuck because what else do you have? You have to have more qualities outside of your looks. So if you're the, like the total package, like you have a personality and you look good, you treat people well, you're kind, you use your, your privileges, whatever that you have as far as your looks and your social clout, you use it for good and you use it for yourself. Boom. That's perfect. That's fine, right? But even with that situation, even with that setup, there is still disadvantages to every type of privilege that you have, Okay. So even the most best looking girl, the best looking guy in the world, they can have problems and issues too, just like anybody else. It's just a little bit different for them, right? They may have people assume the worst out of them just because they look good. They may have people assume that they sleep around just because they look good. You know, they have people making assumptions about them because because they look good, but they don't even know. Some people, there are some people that are fine and don't even know that they're fine. <laughs> There are people that are unconventional beauties like me. I can I consider myself an unconventional beauty, and I and I like seeing unconventional beauty in men and women. It's kind of like this type of beauty where it's like they could, they call it like an awkward beauty or something, but it's kind of like a beauty where it's like it's exotic because it's not supposed to be beautiful. It's not mainstream. It's not according to uh, Western beauty standards, European standards. But even though it's not supposed to, it just works. You make it work. You have the confidence, you have the magnetic personality to attract those people to you. So you don't, it, it, it looks is not a factor. That's why some people would be confused. Like, how come this person, they look like a booger wolf, you know, they look half dead and they able to pull in this, this, this woman and that woman. It's because of how they carry themselves, right? A guy cannot be that attractive. They can be remotely attractive or just common faced, average looking. But because they dress nice, they smell nice, they got game, they have confidence, they believe in themselves, they walk and move like they believe in themselves, they have leadership capabilities. People that got the people that they hang around with, their entourage, you see, you can watch them, you can see them being respected and all that shit. That is the stuff that attracts a woman. And a guy can look good and don't have no personality, no game, has a nasty attitude and feel like just because they look good, everybody's supposed to kiss their ass. And like for me, I attract all kind of guys, regardless of how they look. Like I attract really good looking guys. If I show you 
a picture, you'd be like, girl, la, la, la. You know what I'm saying? But they be seven a cup, seven a cup. So bitch got options. You know, I don't be tripping off of shit. I don't, I don't, I don't um, baby or coddle guys just because they look good. I, as a matter of fact, I do the complete opposite because I know that they're used to see, I know that they're used to women just letting them get away with everything because of how they look. But I don't do that. I treat all of them the same. And it bewilders them, especially out here in LA. <laughs> It bewilders them like, damn, this bitch ain't thirsty for me. Like, she's supposed to be. That's what you think based off of how I look, right? You think that way. But once they see that how I am, my energy is real and I'm not, this isn't no game. This isn't, there's no, there's no gimmick. You know, there's no door number one, door number two, door number three. There's none of that. What you see is what you get. And they see that I'm not coddling them, competing for their gaze, niggas get confused, especially out here in LA. They get confused when they see that you're not, you're not trying to contort yourself and you're cool with being by yourself type shit. They don't know how to deal with that because they're used to dealing with the opposite. Okay. This also confuses other women too, especially out here. It confuses them too, because they're used to clawing each other's fucking eyeballs out over dusties. Okay. But like I said, it's all about it's all about the inside, right? Beauty is, is on the inside. As long as you believe that you are beautiful, and as long as you move like you know that you're beautiful and you're confident, you attract it. It's all about confidence. Uh, going back to my point, some people will look at, uh, at certain people and they'll be like, how are they able to pull in that guy? How is she able to pull in that man? How is this, how is this dude able to pull in all these girls? It's because of their confidence, because they believe in themselves. You know, you have to have a little bit of, sometimes a little bit of the Lulu is, is, is good, right? Just a little bit, like a little dash of, of the Lulu. You, you kind of need that. And that, and that's like some divine Delulu shit where it's like, you know that you're the shit. So therefore you move that way. And when you believe in yourself, others will have no choice but to believe in you. You know, so that's essentially what that is, is to make, is to pretty much use your personality. Make sure you have other things because it's not always about looks and phenotype. Cause I've seen women that look very mainstream attractive and they get fucking dogged out. Now they may get handled with kid gloves. They may get treated better publicly, but behind closed doors, they still get treated like shit. Still, no, regardless of what they phenotype is. They may, and these are the same type of people that will rub their phenotype privilege in people's faces who don't have the same phenotype privilege that they do. But behind closed doors, them dating somebody who's equally just like them, the same vibration as them, they fucking go at each other like cats and dogs. They get treated like shit. And what's crazy is that these same people that weaponize their privilege against others, their phenotype privilege against other people that don't have that, what they they expect when they get dogs that they expect for the people that they look down on to sympathize with them. That's not how it works. That's not how it works. You know, people who make their looks their only personality, that's sad because they really don't have anything else to really offer. They have no personality whatsoever. I mean, zero personality. And then on top of that, if you have a nasty attitude, like you can be able to pull a, pull a guy in or pull a girl in, but eventually they'll get, they're going to get tired. Like, okay, that's it. That's all you got is looks or, or your sexual abilities. That's all you got. Like eventually they'll get tired of that. Now there are some guys that are superficial and men and women that are superficial that don't mind that. And they'll, They'll use you as an arm piece. You use them as an arm piece. So it's mutual. So it works out. So it's like, all right, cool. And then there's other situations where they just get tired of that. And some people, some guys are not even interested. Um, but the video was talking about that I was watching earlier, the TikTok compilation. It was talking about how these women were coming uh, coming on TikTok and they were saying like how the, the guys that they were dating, they would say, oh, I don't like... For instance, I don't like overweight women. I don't like fat bitches. I don't like this, that, you know. And they do this to certain type of women, right? They do this to women who are not women's women, to be honest. Because they they do that so that you won't catch on to what, what they really want to do. Right? So, that way... That woman could be like, well, I know he ain't cheating with you because you don't look like me and he ain't into girls that look like you and da 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 right? 
But the whole time, that's the one that they end up sliding with. And that's why these women be so like baffled and shit. Like, why her? Why this? Why that? Or niggas be so baffled. Why him? Why he get? Why he get it? He a fat nigga. How he get it? How he get that girl? It don't matter. They are chubby. They they call them chubby chases for a reason. Now, there's some people that go after people because of fetishes, and some people go after them because they truly do love them. It might. It, some people they fall in love with people that aren't even their original type. Like they open themselves up to different types. First, they had like dating mandates, and then they realized that the people that they were going after don't really have no substance. They don't have no quality. They have poor character. They treat people poorly. You know, uh, they act like they're everybody's fucking type. You know, they're just fucking trash. And somehow these, these people, they're like, damn, you know, maybe I need to loosen it up my, my, uh, preferences so I can find some well-rounded people. And they decide to find someone that is usually not their type, but they have all the other qualities. The person has a beautiful heart. They, they're mentally sound, mentally and emotionally, uh, mature. You know, they have good energy. They treat them well. They treat people well. They do well for themselves. That, you know, that kind of thing, right? So it's really about your character. It don't matter. It's about your character. It's about your energy. That's what, and your confidence. That's what makes people attracted to you. And that's what I've noticed over the years with myself. You know what I'm saying? Um, I have attracted all kinds of guys I mean, good looking dudes, average dudes, even dudes that ain't even all that, but they got swag. Uh, you would for you know, they have so much, so much personality, you know, that you will forget that they not all that, <laughs> you know, because they believe in themselves, right? Let me light this blunt up. Hmm. Don't ever underestimate that type of situation where you think that your guy... It, it reminds me of that one situation. You remember with um, Joe Budden and Sin San, Santana, right? So you see how like they had said that Sin Santana used to hire uh, dark-skinned women uh, as maids or she, she basically hired them as the help because she was sure that her uh, black uh, man at the time, who's Joe Budden, a light-skinned black man, a butterscotch brother, okay, she felt like, well, I'm going to hire a bunch of dark-skinned uh, black women because, you know, he ain't going to go for them. And you know what he did? In, in true butterscotch Virgo nigga fashion, <laughs> he said, show you right. Oh, okay. Now I'm going, now you're going to see me with a dark skin model. And then you end up seeing him with a beautiful dark skin model. Now, now I don't know how, how far that went, but I, it was just the fact that the way how it happened was so fucking funny. It was so funny because she underestimated the attraction. A guy can say, oh, I don't like dark skin girls. I don't like this, this and that. Whoever they talk shit about the most, that's what they low key like. But who they end up cheating on you with? The dark skin bitch. Oh, I don't like fat bitches. I don't like fat bitches. Who they end up cheating with? A fat bitch. Oh, I don't like gay people. I don't like gay dudes, trans women, this, this, and that. You know, start talking shit and throwing out all these F-bombs and shit. Who they end up cheating with? Who they end up sliding with? Them same ones. Exactly. <laughs> there are women that are incredibly beautiful. They have it all together. They still get dumped on, still get cheated, treated like shit, still get the same nigga that everybody else get. Okay? Same shit. I mean, look at the channels. You know, I mean, even though the channels are faceless, but look at these, like, uh, you know, um, phenotype uh, privilege uh, channels. They talk about how they get treated behind closed doors. That's not all peaches and cream with them either. Even though they have certain phenotype privileges or social privileges. And they don't mind saying it loud and proud, but they also express that they also get treated like shit too, right? Due to the obligations, it depends on the, the type of community. If you're talking about uh, Blackistan, 
we already know what's going on there okay feeling like one owes the other because of social obligations they were placed at the higher you know that the top tier of the social hierarchy in terms of dating within that said community so it's like they have they they feel like they owe them and in some way they kind of do right never be too sure your guy may say i don't like this type of woman that type of woman and that's exactly that they do the exact fucking opposite so it's crazy to see women kind of like choke each other out over over these things it's crazy i know for myself i have like when i look back i was just thinking back <laughs> last night i was just thinking back i was like thinking back on all the faces that i've exchanged fuck faces with <laughs> or all the faces that i've like that try to talk to me and court me and things like that um a lot of people will look at me and be like, oh, you, you, you pulled in that person, you know, this, this, and that, especially out here, right? But like I said, it's all about confidence and energy, right? When I go out, I draw I draw guys in. I'm not even trying to, you know what I'm saying? Some women will get jealous of that. Um, some women will get jealous when they see the type of people that you can pull in because in their minds, they feel like they have some type of phenotype privilege over you. They feel like they have a, some type of like, they feel like, oh, well, I'm close to this, to the Western standard of beauty. So I should be getting all the numbers. I should be getting all the attention. Da, 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 da. But when they hang out with me, they get molded because they end up seeing that I can pull in just like you. Or I can pull in niggas that look better. If Since you're so worried about looks, I can pull in niggas that look better than your nigga. You know what I'm saying? And I mean niggas are all racist. So let me just be clear there. Okay. Um, and there's, there's this thing too, also in my experience, like sometimes remember what I said earlier when I said how sometimes you'll come across people who are like unconventionally attractive or they're not supposed to be attractive, but they are, they make their flaws work for them. And it just looks, they just make it look so good. Um, and so appealing. They have like an interesting look, right? And Sometimes you don't understand your own beauty, your own, your own um, beauty potential, I should say, or your own handsome potential. Sometimes you don't, you don't know that. Like before I realized that about myself, I used to internalize when I was young. I used to internalize what people would say, but that's because I was still young in school. But when I got out of high school, it was different. I was getting approached by different type of guys and I was like damn I didn't sometimes you don't really know that you're attractive because there are people in your life or people that you interact with in, in school and in society in your neighborhood that don't want you to know your your beauty potential your handsome potential. they don't want you to they see something in you and they will try to make sure it never comes out you know So it took a while for me to realize that I was a beautiful person. It took a while for me to do that. Um, and once I got there, once I got to that zone, nothing can take me out of that zone. So now for me now, my confidence is, is high. My confidence is good because I know that I can bring a lot to the table just with my energy, just by being around me. So once you realize that about yourself, you're not going to be quick to keep people around you just to keep people around you. You'll have no problem walking away from anybody because you understand your value as a person. You understand your value. And that is a level of confidence that even the most best looking person can't even be. There are people that are really good looking and they have no confidence whatsoever. They have fake confidence. I see this a lot in LA. You know, they have the whole look together, but they got fake confidence. They're very insecure. And you could tell by how, the way how they handle their friendships, their relationships and all that stuff. They're extremely insecure. And then they'll look at somebody like me and expect for me to be as insecure as they are. And they get perplexed when they see that I'm not. Or they'll see that me, um, they'll see me, uh, you know, they'll like, okay, for instance, like, uh, it's not like they'll, 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 they'll see me move and me do my thing. And I'm not tripping off the same thing that they're tripping off of. 
Okay. So even being on the other side and, and being a part of that beauty standard, that Western beauty standard, it's really not what, it, what it's all cracked up to be. Because as women, we all go through the same shit anyway, regardless of what you look like, your skin color, your hair color, your hair type, whatever. We all go through the same shit. But the problem is, is that we've been socialized to compete and contort ourselves for the male gaze. That's the main reason why we don't have very good relationships with each other. Am I right or am I right? Mm. I just put my sugar free, um, my sugar free, um, ginger ale in the freezer. I'm waiting for it to be ice, ice cold, baby. So I could drink it. I'm just waiting. It's a beautiful day today. I'm mean, sitting right by my um, veranda door. It's like a glass door. <coughs> I can see everything. Clear blue skies. The angel numbers that I saw is three 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 and seven one seven. As soon as I got out of the um, got out of the tub, got my day um, started started writing in my journal I had to get back to my practice because I was writing a lot in the beginning of the year I kind of fell off this month and probably last month not writing as much in my um, in my journal I have a couple of like different notebooks for different things so I'm actually like keeping up because I would keep up with like the angel numbers and symbolism that I see and downloads that that I um, get and then I could put it all, I put it all together. If something ends up happening, I'm like, oh, okay, I saw that coming because of this. You know. um, but anyways, good to journal. That's another download. I'm sorry. Good to journal to kind of like reflect on your daily occurrences. Um, it's a, it's a part of growth. It's a part of like your personal development. If anything significant happened that day, write it down. How did you react to it? This, this, and that. It's good to reflect at the end of the day. Hmm. Sometimes people don't want you to realize your own beauty, especially from my lens, okay? From a lens of an unambiguous black woman, right? Um... Sometimes it takes a while for us to realize our own beauty uh, because our communities tell us that we ain't good enough and they show it in their actions, right? And then, um, where's my uh, lavender cream? Hold on a second. They show us that, and it's like, it takes a while for a lot of us to bloom. Some of us were late bloomers. Um, some people realize their beauty at a young age because they had the confidence instilled in them or they, you know, whatever it is, but it's different paces for different people, right? Different strokes for different folks. And for me, it took me, uh, it took me, me being grown, like the, as years go by, I got more, uh, confident, but I realized like, kind of like looking back, I'm having all these memories, like, um, looking back on when people tried to undermine um, my beauty and it was out of like it was out of like jealousy like they didn't want you to you know how some people they try to humble you they don't want you to feel yourself too much you know you wear a nice outfit this this and that you're getting all the attention and it's like they can't take it that they, that you're getting attention they feel like you don't deserve it or whatever right um so of course you know I dealt with that over the years, especially, you know, being around, being around other women, specifically uh, black women, black women, black girls, and just seeing like the competitiveness, the pettiness, the, the competition, the one-upmanship, it's just ridiculous. Um, I never really paid too much attention to phenotypes, skin color, hair color, none of that stuff, okay? When I was living in a DMV, I didn't even care about all that. I didn't know anything about that, none of that stuff. When I came back out to California, it was just all about that. I'm like, God, everybody like California is like colorist for me. I swear to God, that's all people care about. It's weird. And the ones that benefit from it, they they both be punking each other out. The colorism benefit beneficiaries, 
they be punking themselves out and they don't even be having good relationships. So while they throwing it in your face that, you know, this person wants them and that person wants them, it's like, y'all don't even like each other. Y'all don't even fucking like yourselves. Cause I've really, I sit back and I, I watch certain dynamics of people that think a certain way about other groups of people. And I watch how they move. I watch how they react. And I see how they treat each other behind closed doors. It's nothing to be jealous about. <laughs> I'm telling you. You ain't missing out on shit. Because at the end of the day, you get the same motherfucker that everybody else gets. The same one. Look at all these like these girls. They look really gorgeous. They on TikTok talking about how much they niggas dogging them out. <laughs> how much they had dated people that didn't... They dated niggas that didn't even like them. That didn't even like them. Okay? The same people that be hollering on Facebook back in the day, talking about, you know, you know the uh, the at least I got a man girls, the at least I got a man girls, they be going through the most. They want you to feel like you're doing a bad thing by uh, being single and keep it to yourself and la di da But the whole time, <laughs> these bitches are on on, on fucking TikTok crying about how their niggas getting dogged out because they thought that. Them acting a certain way and looking a certain way was going to get them far. No, it's not. Not only with certain guys, but no, it's not. At the end of the day, they both end up punking each other out. They both end up be, honestly becoming each other's karma and each other's triggers. Like any other fucking relationship. It ain't no different. It ain't no fucking different. So, yeah, I'm just like... <laughs> I'm just like, yo... I'm just like going through the memories and shit. Cause I'm just like, yeah, there were some people that didn't want me to realize my own beauty. Whenever I would try to dress up, when I didn't, when I dressed down, they didn't have no problem when I was dressed down, you know, saying, oh, you a gay bitch, you this and that. They made all type of assumptions because they couldn't use the typical stereotypes, karmic feminine stereotypes that they did for other, other, other people, for other women. You know what I'm saying? They couldn't find anything on me in terms of that. I don't have the same qualities that they have, so I must be this, I must be that. There were times where people tried to undermine my beauty because when I didn't when I didn't uh, dress up, it was all good. When I did try to dress up, it's almost like they felt some type of way. You know, like a little commentary. Oh, dang, you got this. Oh, dang, you got a tight dress on. Or you got, oh, you showing your... You know, like they're always making these comments. Oh, you showing your titties today. Oh, you showing your leg. Oh, you know, da 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 You know, just making a big deal out of it, right? Because it's like they don't want no competition. They don't want any anybody to rival their beauty. Even though society and the neighborhood and the family and everybody tells them that they look a certain way and all this other shit, at the end of the day, that's not even enough for them because they don't even have any confidence. Okay? The most beautiful women in the world don't be having no fucking confidence. Nothing. No confidence. Not all of them, but there'd be certain ones. They don't have no confidence. And even, you could be the most perfect, perfect woman. They got the body, the shape, everything. Be the entire package. And a guy will still wander. A guy will still cheat. A guy will still wander. So it don't matter. So work on being yourself. Making your flaws work for you. Whatever that you want to improve, improve it. Don't let nobody shame you. If you want to get surgery, go get surgery. If you want to work out, go work out. If you want to do both, do both. Do what, what you feel is, is best for you. But just know that once you achieve those things, the dating pool doesn't get any fucking better. It doesn't get, especially out here if you live in LA, baby, or you live in a major city, the dating game doesn't get any fucking better. Your selections does get better, right? Your selections get better. But even with that, there's still bullshit with that. It's going to be bullshit and everything. Even with people that, you know... That have that have privileges. There's a disadvantage to every privilege. Some motherfuckers think that because they have this privilege, and as much as they weaponize their privilege against other people, they feel like there shouldn't be any downsides to it. You're a fucking idiot. There's downsides to fucking everything, dummy. Okay? So you have a privilege. Good for you. Right? Perfect. We all have our privileges against others on certain levels. We all have our privileges. Some people have a certain amount of privileges more than others, right? But the thing is, is to make sure that you acknowledge your privilege, whatever, how small or big it is, and use it for good. Some people don't want to do that. They don't want to use their privilege for good, but they want you to feel sorry for them when they face the downsides of those privileges, when they face the disadvantages of those privileges or they experience privilege envy. They want you to feel sorry for them. No, that's not how it works. 
You're a human motherfucker just like I am. You put on your clothes the same way. You shit, you fart, you piss, just like everybody else. You know what I'm saying? It's not all about looks. And I want people to know that it's not all about that. It's about how you carry yourself. That's what it's about. How you carry yourself. What is your character like? Are you respectful? Are you consistent? Are you kind? What other fucking qualities do you have besides your body shape and your phenotype or whatever? Besides your fucking money, besides your cars, besides all this other superficial things. What do you, but beyond the superficial things, what else do you have to offer? What else do you have to offer? If, if, if those types of things are your only personality, you don't have nothing, really. You don't have nothing. Especially if you're insecure, you got a nasty attitude, this, this, and that. Like, you're going to have just as much of a hard time dating as the average ugly motherfucker. But if that ugly motherfucker got confidence, that ugly motherfucker smell good, know how to dress up, da-da-da. 888. That's another number. That number just called me just now. <laughs> right? But if you, if, if, but that bad ugly motherfucker can dress good, smell good, got swag for days, intelligent, gets respect from people, has an impact on people, then they'll have a better time dating than the prettiest dummy that ain't got no, that ain't got nothing going for themselves. So it ain't all about looks. I learned that a long time ago. Even the ones that 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 are that have this fu- fake ass fucking confidence. I've come across bitches, especially out here, that got this fake ass confidence. It's really, it's not. It's very like temporary, and it's very selective because when it comes to their relationships, their relationships are fucking crappy. It's not. It doesn't. It doesn't match with how they, with the shit that they claim, right? To impress other other people or make other people look at them in a certain way. It doesn't. It doesn't translate as that because it doesn't reflect in their fucking relationships at all. And I'm talking about their romantic relationships, their friendships, their relationships with their family. It don't fucking match. It doesn't match. Let me like this one. Hold on. You'd be amazed how much how. How, how insecure people could be. One time, I remember, um, and I'm going to link up a video that I did back in uh, 2022 when I was in Indianapolis. Um, I was doing a video on my old phone. This is before I got this phone that I'm recording on now. I had got, I had my old phone and I was having, around that time, I was having a lot of audio issues at that time. Y'all already know, like, 2022, I was doing my readings, doing this type of content and shit, and I was having motherfuckers fuck with my damn audio, okay? Because you know how it is in the spiritual community. You know how, how that goes, okay? They start fucking with the audio. Have, when you record and you hear everything good, next thing you know, you don't hear shit no more. <clears throat> Ooh, my hair. Oh, I am so tender headed, y'all. I kind of always been, but it's like, it seemed like it got worse over the years. Like, I don't even use a comb. Yes, me, my black ass. I don't use a comb. My comb is my four fingers. I finger comb. I'm a finger comb kind of bitch. And if there's like a little piece of hair that's kind of matted, all I do is moisten the hair up by using some kind of rose water or some kind of leave-in conditioner or cream and then I'll just like you know um split it like split it apart I just finger comb I don't use a comb um I hardly use a brush I need to get one I don't mind a brush but I was one of those bitches that used to brush my hair hard I don't know why I would do that I used to brush my hair hard oh my god you know when you finish take like a spiritual bath right you have all of these like pieces of leaves and grains in your hair. I just noticed that when I shake my hair, <laughs> all of the um, little pieces of uh, leaves and stuff from my bath is coming all over me. <laughs> I 
Yeah, but anyway, so um, I remember this one time. Well, it was actually this happened a couple times. So I was, um, I'm just giving you an example of how how women are can be kind of like insecure and very competitive and just like the one up and shit and all that. Okay, so um, there was this time where okay, I was um, going out and partying with a relative, right? A former relative. Um, let me put my uh, head towel back on. What happened to my other one? I had a silk one. I don't know what happened. I'm just going to wear this one. I just want to feel my hair right quick. My hair feel good. I've been using this stuff called um, Batana oil. Batana. B-A-T-A-N-A. It's some Honduran shit. You feel me? And you know.